Hi guys, so today we're going to be going over chapter 16 or mass transfer analysis and um, before we go through a problem I just wanted to present some important definitions from this chapter. So usually the goal of questions that are given in this chapter is to find the height of a column but now also taking into account um, the mass transfer that comes into play. Um, so there's a lot of derivations in your textbook that you can take a look at for the exact definitions but this is just a summary of what you're usually going to use. Um, so this equation here is sort of your guiding equation. So the height of um, either the stripping or enriching section of your column is going to be equal to the number of gas phase transfer units that you have multiplied by the height of your gas phase transfer unit. So usually you'll be given this value of HG or HOG, which is the same thing but for the overall. Um, and you'll be asked to calculate the value of NG. Um, and NG can be calculated using this equation here. Um, and again, we're going to use this in the upcoming problem, but I think it would be good to copy these down on a sheet of paper so that you have them as your guiding equations. Um, and this, you should also keep in mind, that is analogous to liquid if you just replace the G with an L and the Y with an X. And then your operating line for mass transfer, um, you can define it one of two ways. So you can use it using these constants here, KXA and KYA. Um, or you can use it using your L over V and um, given heights. Um, these two forms are equivalent where your main operating variables here, Y and X, are a function of these constants, but also this X and Y that will come from your regular um, operating line of the column. Okay, so just take a moment to copy these down and then we're going to do a question. Okay, so the problem I'm going to be doing is from chapter 16, question D4. So in this question, we're given a simple column with one feed and a distillate and a bottom. And we're given the incoming feed composition as well as the quality of the feed and the composition of the distillate and the bottoms. We're also given some additional information. So we're given our L over D, which is the same as our reflux ratio. We're also given our HG and HL values, and we're asked to find the heights of the enriching and the stripping sections. So from before, one of the formulas I gave was H equals NGHG, and we're given already HG. So our goal is going to be to find NG. Okay. Um, I'm also showing here a um, sort of simplified McCabe Thiel diagram. I'll be uploading a picture of how it's actually supposed to look like at the end, but here so you can see what I'm doing along, um, understand it conceptually, and then go ahead and print out a graph on your own. So you would also be given the equilibrium data for this problem. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to plot as usual our operating lines for the top and the bottom of the column like any distillation column. Um, so our top operating line, um, we know from a mass balance that we can find that the equation is equal to y equals r over r plus 1 x plus 1 over r plus 1 xd. So by now you should be really good at deriving this because it's just one of the simplest cases. So our equation for our top operating line is going to be y equals 0.474x plus 0.484. Okay, and this just comes from plugging in this r value that we were given as well as the xd value that we were given over here. Okay, so now we're able to plot our op top operating line. It should look something a little bit like this. Okay, and our next step is using our feed line. We can also find our bottom operating line. So we know that the bottom operating line will intersect at this point here, 0 0.04, 0 0.04. And we also know that the slope of our feed line um, is going to be... Um, we can find it using the Q. So the slope of the Q line is just going to be Q over Q minus 1. So that will give us just a slope of minus 1.5. And we also know that the Q line has to intersect at the point on the Y equals X line here of 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Um, so we can also just plot that and connect it to our top operating line here. And then simply, we don't even have to find an equation for our bottom operating line since we have two points that we know it intersects. So we can just draw it like that. Okay, so that you should be able to do pretty easily by now. It's um, based on your distillation chapter. So nothing new here. So the next step now that is new is we're gonna have to um, plot our mass transfer lines in order to find the value of NG. So like I said before, NG is defined using this integral. So Y in over Y out, one over YAI 
minus y a d y a okay so since we're asked to find both the height of the enriching and stripping section we're going to tackle one section at a time so i'm going to right now look at the enriching section or in other words enriching is just this top section of your column so for enriching section we know that it's going to come in um, at the point of intersection here so whatever your y value is here, um, that's going to be your y in. So you should get a y in of about 0.605. And again, because this is a graphical method, you can get slightly different numbers. Um, but as long as your final number is within reason of the answer, you will get full marks. Um, we also know that our y out over here is going to be equal to 0 0.92, just because also that was given. Okay, so now we have our bounds of integration. Now we need to plot our mass transfer line. So these lines are going to extend out from your operating line and they're gonna hit your equilibrium line at different points. So like I defined before, the slope of these lines is going to be equal to negative L over V times HG over HL. Okay, so if we plug everything in, you get negative 0.474 times, we're given 1.3 and 0.8, so 1.3 over 0.8, and you're going to get a slope equal to negative 0.77. Okay, and now is going to come the more work intensive part of this process. So our next goal is we're going to try to find these YA values, YAI and YA values, so that we can get an approximation of what's inside here. So we can't really find um, a like true formula based on this, so we're going to have to use other methods such as the trapezoid method in order to find this. So I'm going to write down a step-by-step -step process that we're going to follow. So using the slope that we just calculated, we're now going to go through the step-by-step -step process that's going to let us find the value of the integral that we need. So step one is to calculate the slope, which we just did and we found to be negative 0.77. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a point on the operating line. So for this one, I'm going to do our very first point at the top. So that's the point um, 0 0.92, 0.92. Okay, and I've made a table that I suggest you use every time you have to do a question of this method because it helps you stay organized and add all the values you need. So our YA is our Y value of the point we chose on our operating line. So for this first point, that's just going to be equal to 0.92. Okay, so the next step is we're going to find an equation for our mass transfer line using this point. So since we know y equals mx plus b, we have our point and we have our slope. We can just plug everything in to find our intercept and we have an equation. So for this first one, you're going to get y equals negative 0.77x because that's our slope. And you're going to find an intercept of 1.63. Okay, so now we have this line and we can plot it. And it's going to look a little bit like this. So now that we have it, you'll see that it intersects the equilibrium line. So our next step is we're going to find our YAI value. So the YAI value is simply where this mass transfer line that we just calculated intersects the equilibrium curve. This is going to be this point here, and it's going to be the Y value of this point. So you want to be careful when you do this that you're not reading X values unless you're using the analogous method that uses X. But remember, we're doing only the Y values because that's a mistake I would make a lot. Don't get tripped up by that. So you're going to find that if you read off the graph, your YAI value is about 0.95. Again, depending on how you drew this, um, you might get a slightly different number. But again, we have um, some room for graphical error in this method. Okay, so your next step then is you're just going to calculate this value, which is just YAI minus YA, um, and then the inverse of that. So you'll find that for this case, it's 33.33. .33. Okay, so you're going to want to do this for a couple points along this line. Usually four to six points is a good enough um, estimate to get you a good integral. Um, I'd also suggest for sure including this point here and the point here where it intersects your feed line. That way you're sure you've defined um, your operating line along the full region. So how I did it is I did 0 0.92, I did 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.65, 
and 0.605. If you really wanted to be thorough, you could do it in such a way that you have even spacing, but again, totally up to you. Um, so I'm just gonna go now and write down all the equations that I found and all the YAI values that I read so that we can then go through and do the trapezoid method. So for 0.08, Again, the equation is going to have the same slope, it's just the intercept that's going to be changing. So this one had an intercept of 0.132. Um, from now on, I'm just going to write the intercept so you can see because the slope is never going to change. So this one's going to be 0 0.106, 0 0.93, and 0.813. And having this intercept is really useful for plotting because with your ruler you can just connect the point you chose to the intercept on the axis. Or another method you could do that's a little bit less correct is once you have the slope of your first line plotted, you can just move your ruler down a little bit on the paper um, trying to keep the same angle. It's quicker, but it's a little bit less accurate. So it's up to you and it depends on how much time you would have on an exam, for example, to do this. Um, so based on all these equations, the yi values that are found, 0.8 was 0.84, and here it was 0.74. Here was 0.68, here was 0.62. Again, just subtracting, doing one over to fill in this column. So these two are both 25, 33.33, and 66.67. Okay, so the final step is to integrate. Um, I like using the trapezoid method because it's quick. Um, the textbook likes using Simpson's rule. Just use your favorite integration method. Just don't use um, the rectangle one because you are integrating something that is probably going to be a curve. So the rectangle one won't give you a very accurate answer. So my trapezoid areas were as follows. 5, 1.46, and 2.25. Um, so just a reminder, the trapezoid method is, um, it'd be your two y values, so this plus this all over two, so it's the average height times the width of your base, which in this case would be this value minus this value. So that's why I don't have one for the first one, because it's only a line and not a trapezoid. So if you add these all up, you're going to get that your final, I don't think you can see that, so I'm going to write it here, your final ng value for your enriching section, I got as... 9.71 okay and then to find the height of your enriching section you're just going to multiply ng by hg and you'll get that your height is equal to 12.6 feet so this is not exactly what the textbook got, but it's because, again, of a different in, difference in methods. So I used the trapezoid rule, and them in their answer key, they used um, Simpson's method, and I also used different points than Dave did. But it's within reason. Um, so as long as you're not more than like two to five away from what the answer gives, you probably did it correctly. Okay, um, so that's the basic method of how to do this. If you do this again for your stripping section, you would again just draw different lines. Um, these will have a different slope because now they would be based on your L over V at the bottom. Um, so it's going to look a little bit more like this, but the procedure is exactly the same. And if you go ahead and do this for your stripping section, you'll get a final height of, I got 8.4 feet. So I'll write that here. And I'll also upload my table that I um, did for the stripping section. Okay, and that's all there really is to these problems. They're a lot more time consuming than the regular ones because they are um, kind of a heavy analytical method. But if you like to use a computer, I would suggest uh, making an Excel doc that would help you um, fill in this table more easily. But again, it's the basic method every time. So you plot your operating lines, then you find the slope of your mass transfer operating lines using a point on your column operating line. You just find where it intersects on the equilibrium line and then you use that to fill in your table to then find your integral that you need to calculate ng. Okay, I hope this helps you guys. Good luck.